Many people associate theme parks to the United States of America, and that's for good reason. We have it all from immersive experiences like Disneyland to roller coaster monopolies like Cedar Point. But I just got back from a seven week trip around Europe, and let me just say, some of the parks I experienced there are unlike anything you'd find in America. In the last video, I begun my ranking of all European theme parks I visited, spots 27 to 14. Part two, AKA the video you're watching right now, will contain spots 13 to one. If you haven't yet seen part one of the series, I'd highly recommend watching that video first. It contains a lot of the obscure, lesser known parks in Europe, while this video involves the more popular parks that you've definitely heard of before. Before we get started, let's recap some of the caveats. First, the countries I visited were Poland, Denmark, Germany, the Netherlands, Belgium, France, and Switzerland. The latter two countries were not park focused at all, but there were still a handful of parks from those places that were in part one of the list. Some places that won't qualify are A, various alpine coaster stops. This one is self-explanatory as these aren't full-fledged amusement parks. They are instead either ski resorts, roadside attractions, or tourist spots in these absolutely beautiful scenic landscapes. We were able to ride two of these in southern Germany and five in the stunning Alps of Switzerland. Also, we were fortunate enough to visit the second largest fair in Germany called Rheinkirmes, right in the heart of Dusseldorf. This doesn't make the list either since it's temporary and all of the rides are constantly traveling from one location to the other, but I thought I'd give Rheinkirmes a shout out since it's by far the best fair I've ever been to. Between their four unique roller coasters, endless large scale flat rides, and chaotic atmosphere, this was an experience I'll never forget. If I were forced to include them in this list, I'd probably rank them in the top five because I had never been to a fair on that scale before. And as far as I'm concerned, it might have the greatest ride lineup in any fair, which solidifies its artificial placement on this list. Anyways, let's not waste any more time. Here's how I rank every single theme park that I visited in Europe, spots 13 to 1. Number 13 is a park that really surprised me, Bakken in Denmark. While Tivoli Garden seems to typically get the spotlight in the Copenhagen area, I actually thought this park was far superior. Bakken opened its gates in 1583. Yeah, you heard that right, 1583, that's crazy. So that was before the concept of an amusement park even existed, and the way this park operates truly reflects the history. I don't think I've ever been to a park with as much of a laid back feel as this one. The staff and ride operators are all so enthusiastic and the crew over at Tornado even went as far as to turn the ride on boost mode for us. This is a setting for the ride where you're able to spin much faster than intended and all of the brakes are turned off. You can imagine how batshit insane this ride experience was, and the best part is, every time we came back into the station, the ride-ups would literally force us to stay in our seats because they wanted to get us spinning as fast as they possibly could. I'm not sure of any park in America that would do something even remotely similar to this. In addition, they have a 1932 scenic railway coaster called Rushbananen. This one may not have a brakeman like the one at Tivoli Gardens, but it's still a rock-solid ride that tracks very smooth. There's also an Intamin family coaster here called Mine Train Olven, and it genuinely blew me away. The forces were great, the ride was long, and it's not at all what I was expecting. Bakken is also home to some magnificent flat rides, a buzzing atmosphere, incredible food, and was an overall surprise in almost every category. I'm sure most of you that have to choose whether to visit this park or Tivoli Gardens would pick the latter, but honestly, Bakken does virtually everything better and will save you a good amount of money as well. Number 12 is a very cool park, or Lebnis Park Tripstrill in Germany. The country's oldest amusement park opened in 1929, and you can feel every bit of that charm throughout the park. Tripstrill celebrates German culture, but does so by embracing such peculiar themes. And I don't mean that in a bad way, because it's really what makes this park so awesome. The log flume, which alone has a ridiculous name, Badawan and Fart Zoom Jungbrunnen, is literally themed to what the park describes as a bathtub ride to the Fountain of Youth. And what do you know, the Fountain of Youth happens to have a bunch of naked bathing women on display. In addition to this park's charm, it's worth mentioning how much they've expanded over the past decade. In 2013, they added Carajo, which is in my opinion the best ride in the park. This is a Gerslauer Infinity Coaster with one of the best launches in the world and a zippy layout from start to end. They also recently added Halsuberkopf, which translates to head over heels in English. Funny enough, this is actually an incorrect translation because the German text does not imply the connotation of being in love like the English term does, so instead this is meant to describe the ride's several inversions, which all deliver spectacular hang time. Halsuberkopf is a special ride because it was the first time Vekoma built their updated suspended looping coaster model. This style of ride is infinitely more enjoyable than the rough, uncomfortable old SL and it seems like Trips Drill in general has a bright future ahead. I cannot wait to see what this park does next. Number 11 on our list is Plopsaland de Pan in Belgium, home to what is, in my opinion, the greatest roller coaster ever built. Tomorrowland's Ride to Happiness is an absolute work of art, from its layout to its theming, its soundtrack, and its technology. If I could choose one coaster to ride for the rest of my life, I would pick this one in a heartbeat. But just because this park is home to my favorite ride in the world doesn't mean it's my favorite park in the world. In many ways, the park looks, feels, and has a somewhat comparable ride lineup to Holiday Park 
Park in Germany. And this makes sense because they're both part of the same chain. I mean that in a sense that Holiday Park has an ultra elite coaster, Expedition G-Force, and a good second place coaster, Skyscream, but really nothing after that that interests me. This park does something similar. I do realize that it's a family park and most of it is not meant for my target audience though. That's why when they built Ride to Happiness, no one could even believe it. How could the small Belgian theme park that no enthusiast had ever even heard of build something this insane? I really don't know the answer, but I'm also certainly not complaining. There were a few other attractions I did enjoy though, like Anubis, the park's Gerslauer launch coaster. This is a very similar ride to Daredevil Dive down at Six Flags Over Georgia in the United States. However, instead of a vertical lift hill, you have one of the snappiest launches on any coaster. Heidi the ride was also a pleasant surprise. This one is identical to White Lightning at Fun Spot in Orlando, Florida, though in my opinion it tracks much smoother and is themed to a greater extent. Lastly, they have a really cool log flume here, but unfortunately I did not get to ride it since the line was hovering at the hour mark all day long. Other than Ride to Happiness, nothing about Plopsaland really blew me away. At the same time, I wouldn't say anything about it is bad either, but if it weren't for the masterpiece of a ride they recently built, I probably would have excluded this park from my trip. Barely cracking the top 10 is Fair Up Summerland in Denmark. This was just a pleasant park to be in. It's all covered by forest, the atmosphere is very low key, and the rides are pretty good too. Fair Up Summerland recently made headlines for the addition of Denmark's tallest and fastest roller coaster, Phoenix. This was the first Vacoma Wildcat model ever built and was the perfect fit for this park. I think a lot of people were expecting something like Lek Coaster in Poland, a similar ride that ups the intensity by a thousand times. Phoenix, on the other hand, is very family thrill, but not in a bad way. It's by far one of the most rewritable coasters I've been on because it's smooth and the layout is so fluid. But with all the attention Phoenix gets, it's worth noting that Linnet is a fantastic runner-up. This Gerslauer launch coaster might be one of the most surprising coasters I rode while in Europe. The launch is incredible, the airtime is some of the strongest in Denmark, and the best moments on this ride are superior to the best moments on Phoenix. Though I would say I slightly prefer Phoenix because it's much more of a consistent ride experience. Linnet does suffer from a dull third quarter, and it's also not nearly as smooth. A few other rides I enjoyed, Falcon is an SNS wooden coaster with a surprising amount of airtime. Orkanen is also a Vacoma family inverted coaster, those are always enjoyable. But above all the rides, the thing that stood up to me about this park were the incredible staff. No offense to any Europeans watching, but I wholeheartedly think Danish people are some of the kindest people in the world. This park did nothing but back that up. The ride operators were constantly hyping you up for your ride, asking how it was, and they loved being in my video, which is always a plus. Number nine on our list is Wallaby Holland in the Netherlands. While I think Fair Up Summerland does atmosphere, appearance, staff, and operations better than Wallaby Holland, rides are at the forefront of why I rank a park so high on my lists. Wallaby Holland has a fantastic top three, and it's only going to get better when they add a Rocky Mountain Construction Raptor coaster within the next few years. The park's current best roller coaster is also the best coaster in the Netherlands and is also one of the best coasters I've ever ridden. Untamed is one of three RMCs throughout the European continent, and it is my favorite of all the small-scale RMCs around the world. Untamed has tons of ejector airtime, ranging from sustained to quick bursts, and it never lets up until you hit the final break run. Goliath is the park's Intamin mega coaster, and it is the tallest roller coaster in the country. The ride caught me by surprise because the airtime it offers is really quite good. The middle section of me was just okay, but the first and third quarters were absolutely fantastic. Also, Lost Gravity is a really unique coaster that rounds out a terrific big three. It became my first Mock Rides Big Dipper coaster and is one of two soon to be three out there in the world. The elements are usually so sharp to the point where it feels like you're on a pogo stick. I do wish Wallaby Holland had a better supporting lineup of coasters, as three old Vacomas just isn't going to cut it. It's a very top heavy collection that this park has, but it's easily the biggest reason they're in the top 10. Also, the people working here were very energetic, so that's always good too. Now, originally, the next park was a bit lower on this list, but after thinking about it, I've decided to put Wallaby Belgium above Wallaby Holland. Located outside of the country's capital, Brussels, this park has a much more well-rounded coaster lineup. Wallaby Belgium's standout attraction is Conda, which is comparable in quality to Untamed. This Intamin mega coaster is an absolute masterpiece, with its diverse layout and never-ending ejector airtime. The park went all out to theme this ride, give it a fresh plaza, and do whatever they could to make it a full package experience. Once again, I firmly believe that Conda is one of the best coasters in all of Europe. I think the biggest reason Wallaby Belgium was so difficult to rank is because they don't have a definitive second place coaster. Wallaby Holland has two after Untamed that are, like, really good. However, where Wallaby Belgium excels over Wallaby Holland is the park seems to have a roller coaster for everyone. Psyche Underground is a really cool indoor launch coaster, and Pulsar is a very unique launched water coaster. 
Tiki Waka is one of my favorite wild mouse coasters out there, and Calamity Mine is one of my favorite mine trains out there. And then Loop Karoo is a unique Vacoma wooden coaster with some surprising airtime, although it is pretty rough, so if they decided to RMC this thing, it would be an amazing fit for this park. In my opinion, Wallaby Belgium is also more beautiful than Wallaby Holland. They do better theming, and apparently they have some great dark rides as well. I just think as an all-around package, this park checks off a few of the boxes that Wallaby Holland cannot, and that's why ultimately I'm ranking them one spot higher and will also consider them to be the best theme park in Belgium. Coming in at number 7 is Toverland in the Netherlands. This park really surprised me, I was not expecting it to be so nice. The theming that they've implemented into some of their newer sections is absolutely incredible. Just look at Avalon for example, this has got to be one of the most beautiful sections of any park I've been to. It's also anchored by one of the two major coasters they have at Toverland called Phoenix. This B&M wing coaster opened with the land in 2018 and is an absolutely awesome experience. From the layout to the presentation and the atmosphere, this ride was a pleasant surprise. In the same land, I also discovered a ride called Merlin's Quest and it was amazingly well themed. Closer to the front of the park is my favorite coaster here called Troy, a massive GCI wooden coaster. It's actually one of the largest wood coasters in Europe. And while it isn't as smooth as many of its sister rides, it does have a beautifully designed layout. Lots of airtime moments, lots of helixes, lots of intensity, and the smoothness is not a problem if you're in the very front row. My next Next favorite ride in the park isn't actually a roller coaster, it's a log flume. Expedition Zork starts in the indoor section of the park, yes part of the park is indoors but we'll get to that later, but this ride also goes well outside of the building and has all sorts of tricks up its sleeve. Not only is the theming great, but it has a backwards drop, a huge forwards drop, and some of the turntables are in the weirdest positions possible. To elaborate more on the indoor section thing, Toverland has two giant buildings side by side that house a couple of rides and attractions in case it's raining. It's such a brilliant idea and the park makes sure that the inside areas also look really nice and have their share of unique attractions. With all the open land surrounding the park and the potential to expand in the future, I cannot wait to see what Toverland does next. Another park that actually really blew me away was number 6, Jura Summerland in Denmark. If I could use one word that best describes this park, and it may sound kind of vague, but it's just the word nice. Yeah, it really just does sum up every aspect about this place, from the rides, the atmosphere, the operations, staff, food, and things to do. Jura Summerland does just about everything right. Their headlining attractions are a trifecta of intimates that are all pretty hard to pronounce, so sorry if I do a bad job pronouncing anything in this video. Piraten is the only Intamin Megalite outside of Asia, and it is an absolutely outstanding ride when warmed up. You'd think by looking at it that it's a nice, fun, family thrill ride, but the airtime it packs in is downright insane. Uvalin is an Intamin family launch coaster with an okay first half, but then you hit the second launch and the intensity is raised by like 15 times. I remember questioning how we were going so fast through the layout. It seemed genuinely impossible. Drag Kong is an inverted coaster that pulls a shocking amount of positive g-forces. I will say it wasn't nearly as smooth as I was expecting, but putting that aspect aside, it is the perfect family thrill coaster for any park. What I love so much about the top three Intamins here is that they all focus on something completely different, and Jura Summerland did the best to theme all of them. The next best thing about this park are the staff, and let me be perfectly straightforward, I don't think I've ever met ride operators so energetic in my life. The ride-ups at Piraten are dressed up and even have a sword to fit in with the theme, and sometimes they'll poke people with the sword when they aren't looking, and it's really funny to see the reactions. At Uvalin, the ride-ups start screaming at you in Danish, and I obviously don't speak Danish, so I don't exactly know what they're trying to say, but my best guess is that they're telling you to escape immediately. Again, fitting the theme. The people working here are so passionate for their park, which on its own has a terrific ride lineup. I even forgot to mention their frisbee ride theme to Tigers. That was probably the best pendulum ride I've ever been on. So yeah, if you can only visit one theme park in Denmark, this one should absolutely be at the top of your list. This was a very impressive park. Narrowly making the top 5 is Hansa Park in Sierksdorf, Germany. This park left an impression on me because they aren't really that big at all, but they pack in the theming, the thrills, and the immersion I'm looking for in a good theme park. Of course, you can't talk about Hansa Park without mentioning the Schwartz Cannon. This is easily one of the most insane roller coasters I've ever ridden. It is so intense, so fast, and the theming is so cool and it has some surprises that blew me away. I don't want to spoil any of the surprises for those of you who have not ridden this ride, but it's one of the reasons this coaster was so shocking to me. The story of the Schwartz Cannon ties into the story of Flucht von Novgorod, which is another Gerslauer coaster in the same park. This ride also blew my expectations out of the water. I didn't even think it was too far off from Karanon. The theming, once again, is so dark dark because you're playing the role of a character who escapes Novgorod to fight the ruler of the land, but instead of most stories where you win and become victorious and live happily ever after, in this story he captures you and executes you and that's exactly what I love so much about Hansa Park. Their willingness to go for such outlandish dark themes that no one else would even dare to come up with is absolutely incredible. It really is immersive. Hansa Park
park being an independent park does everything else that I'm looking for as well. It's well landscaped, has good food, they maintain this park the best they can, etc. Going in, I wasn't really expecting to like Hansa Park as much as I did, but here we are with a solid fifth place ranking on this list. Now, it's worth mentioning that we take an even bigger quality jump from here on out. All of the top four parks on this list have their own reasons to be number one, and I think the order you rank them in is entirely subjective. And after a lot of thinking things through, I've decided to put Europa Park in Germany at the number four spot. Europa Park is an absolute spectacle because they do themed sections better than almost any other park in the world. I mean, look at this Swiss area. This is a primary example of what I enjoy most about Europa Park. Their ability to immerse you in another culture, away from the crowds, with unique rides and attractions in every single land. Some other great examples are Greece with the beautiful white and blue buildings buildings, and Spain with all of its vibrant colors, live dancing, Spanish food, etc. The best land for rides is Iceland, which is actually kind of ironic because the Iceland section is one of the least immersive from a theming perspective. But they do happen to include two of Europa Park's three biggest coasters to compensate. Fodon Timber Coaster is a powerful GCI wooden coaster that really caught me by surprise. I was not expecting its pacing to be so intense and its theming to be so complete. Blue Fire Mega Coaster is right next door, and it isn't actually a mega coaster at all. Blue Fire is a launch coaster. I know a lot of coaster enthusiasts like to make fun of this ride. They say it's forceless or has a really weak launch, whatever it may be. But I thought Blue Fire was actually pretty great. The highlight element for me was definitely that roll at the end. It reminded me of the Mosasaurus roll. Silver Star is the park's tallest and fastest coaster, and it's so hard to rank because the first half is pretty average for the ride genre, while the second half is absolute insanity. Some of the craziest airtime and pacing on any B&M, and if the entire ride was like the second half, it would be one of my favorite hyper coasters in the world. I also did love three of this park's many dark rides. Pirates in Batavia is Europa Park's take on Pirates of the Caribbean at the Disney parks. It's absolutely terrific. Huge physical sets and immersive from start to end. Volatarium is the park's take on Soarin' Around the World, and that one is also really good. Then there's a Haunted Mansion ripoff in the Italy section that I found to be much more explicit and much darker than Haunted Mansion. The only reason Europa Park is not higher on this list is because I find that the coaster lineup is a little bit lacking. The park has 13 roller coasters, and none of them are elite. Even once you get past the top three, everything is family-oriented. They are set to debut Voltron next year, which will be their fourth big coaster, and I think that's a step in the right direction. But I still don't see that being a truly elite ride that this park so desperately needs in my opinion. Moving on to number three, we've got Efteling in the Netherlands. This park has a little bit of everything, and it's run as professionally as a Disney park is. I think what surprised me the most was learning that Efteling was an independent property because this place is spotless, has fast operations, and some of the best themed dark rides and coasters in the world. It seems like their spending budget is through the roof. The best way I described Efteling is that it feels like a Disney park with an independent park charm that I really grew to love while in Europe. So much of this park feels overly quaint, with the best example being the fairy tale forest. This is what made the park what it is today, and it is one of the coolest things I've seen in any theme park. For those of you who are familiar with Enchanted Forest in Oregon and the United States, it's like that but on a larger scale. As for the actual rides, Efteling has an interesting blend of dark rides and roller coasters, and no matter what style of ride it is, they go all out with theming. Symbolica was my favorite ride here, and in my opinion, it's one of the best dark rides ever built. The atmosphere and immersion is unparalleled, and I love how there is three different ride sequences where you explore the castle's various different rooms. Fata Morgana is another great dark ride, so is Dream Flight. That one was very relaxing. Villa Volta was my first madhouse attraction, and that thing messed with my mind. And then the best coasters here first was Yoris and Drac, which is a dueling GCI wood coaster that rode much more intense than I expected. The layout was very creative, with one track diving over and under the other. Baron 1898 is a close runner up. This one is a dive coaster with a pretty average layout. But here's the thing Efteling was able to take such a simple ride and theme the all living hell out of it. You have the custom lift structure that makes it look like a mine shaft and a drop that dives straight underground into the darkness. This fits the theme so well because you're basically the theme is that you're going to explore the haunted mine and no one makes it out alive. This is displayed in the pre-show which was absolutely incredible as well. What other dive coaster is a pre-show? Last ride I'll mention is Valende Hollander which is easily the best water coaster on earth. I didn't know what was going on so it's hard for me to elaborate on what the theming was like but the indoor bit is absolute chaos. Efteling has a certain magic to it that I really can't describe. Their ability to do things that so few parks can is something I admire, and it's the reason they became one of my top three favorite parks in Europe. My second favorite theme park I visited in Europe is Energylandia in Zadar, Poland. Everyone knows about this park's coaster collection and how top-heavy it is, but no one talks about anything else because so few enthusiasts have even had the chance to experience Energylandia. This park is very well kept, very clean, is very efficient, and probably have some of the best operations in the world. Both days we visited the park, there was not one line that we had to wait longer than 15 minutes in. This wasn't because the park was quiet, matter of fact the entire parking lot was full both days, but it's because they kept the line moving at such a good 
pace. Also, the food is incredible. In the Aqualanta section of the park, you can find high quality ramen at such a cheap price, and it was some of the best theme park food I've ever had. In recent years, Energylandia has grown to become more of a themed experience, which is why the entire back half is so much more immersive than the front half. I love what they've been doing and I only expect it to continue because this park will not stop expanding. They are being partially funded by the European Union and Polish government because they want to bring more tourists to Poland. And let me say that the investment has been working. Energylandia opened its gates in 2014 and they have 19, soon to be 20 roller coasters. That means that in 2022, Energylandia will have tied Six Flags Magic Mountain in California in the US for the most coasters in one single park in the world. The difference is, Magic Mountain opened in 1971 and they've committed themselves to become the thrill capital of the world. Energylandia hasn't even been open for an entire decade and they've been building rides and coasters like it's nothing. Granted, this park caters more to a family audience, so most of their coasters are family coasters, but that's not to say that they don't have their fair share of thrill thrill coasters. Oh boy, do they have their own fair share of thrill coasters. Zadra is the tallest and fastest hybrid coaster in the world and has the best pacing of any RMC coaster. The elements of choice, the theming, and the presentation of the area outside the ride is absolutely flawless. Energylandia did not hold back when creating this ride. Zadra immediately became my favorite ride by RMC and it even ranks inside my top three favorite roller coasters I've ever been on. Not to be outdone, Hyperion is the second tallest coaster in Europe at 269 feet tall. This intimate hyper coaster is one of the best hypers in the entire world. The airtime is absolutely insane, the intensity is off the charts, and the layout is very diverse. Abyssus is a ride that really caught me by surprise. Many enthusiasts were disappointed with this ride when it opened because they said it wasn't nearly as intense as expected. But considering the fact that I gray out at least twice every ride, I don't understand the criticism. Sure, it's not Let Coaster, but I thought the layout was still great and the elements flowed very nicely. Formula was kind of the predecessor to Abyssus because they ride relatively similar. Formula is definitely less intense, but the airtime and pacing is very comparable. This was Vacoma's first modern thrill coaster when it opened in 2016 and proved to be a very big success. Next year, the park will open their 20th coaster, and that will be a huge Vacoma tilt coaster. If you want to see the elements this thing will have, go to the roller coaster database. It sounds absolutely insane. Energylandia is a park that continues to amaze me because they don't seem to have any limits. And because they basically have an unlimited amount of room to expand, I can't wait to see what they keep coming up with. With that being said, my number one favorite theme park I visited in Europe has to be Fantasia Land in rural Germany. This park does everything right, absolutely everything. They have the incredible theming of a place like Europa Park, but the difference between Fantasia Land and Europa Park is that this park also has incredible roller coasters. Fly is the world's only flying launch coaster, and Vacoma knocked it out of the park with this one. The ride is situated in the new Rookberg section of the park, which is one of the most immersive sections of any theme park in the world. I wasn't just floored by the area, I was floored by the overall ride experience of Fly. It might be one of the most re-rideable coasters on Earth because it's perfectly smooth, it has such diverse forces, it's such a long ride, and you cannot keep track of where you're going next. The same can be said about Terran, the park's intimate blitz coaster located in the Klugheim section. This is my personal favorite land at Fantasia Land. The medieval theming and rock work is so good it's almost stupid. It adds so much to the ride experience of Terran, which already would have been a fun ride on its own. This is also where you're going to find my favorite food in the park at a place called Root Mora's Tavern. The restaurant continues the theme of Klugheim and the food quality is amazing. Who am I kidding? The food quality anywhere in this park is amazing. Try their pizza. Black Mamba is in the park's Africa section. It's one of the most creative b and inverts out there. Most of it stays beneath ground level, which is a reoccurring theme at this park because they can't build super high. Due to restrictions, they have to get really creative, and that's why you have these amazing theme sections acting as barricades. The Mexico section is another one of my favorites, featuring the magnificent Chiapas, which is by far one of the best log flumes out there. Also, River Quest has got to be one of the best river rapids out there, and Colorado Adventure, one of the best mine trains out there. Windjoss, one of the most dynamic spinning rides I've seen, and Mystery Castle, an absolutely outstanding drop tower located entirely indoors. Now, I want you to take all of these rides all of these lands and all of this theming into consideration when I tell you that this park is one of the smallest we visited in Europe. You can walk from one side of this park to the other in probably five to ten minutes, but that doesn't matter when you have theming and rides as incredible and immersive as Fantasia Land. This entire park is an art piece and I cannot recommend it enough. If you can only visit one park in Europe, this one has to be it. Anyways, that's going to do it for part two of ranking every European theme park I visited. Getting the chance to do a trip like this was an experience of a lifetime. Seeing parks in other countries function and what they do better than American parks was very intriguing to witness firsthand. If you've been considering a trip to Europe, do it, and I highly recommend all the parks on this list. These past two videos took an awful lot of work, by the way, so feel free to support what I do by hitting subscribe and liking the video. It really helps the channel out. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you very soon. Bye, guys.